microbes in human welfare dear students last video we have learned about microbes in household product and industrial product in this video we are going to learn about microbes in sewage treatment microbes in the production of biogas microbes as biocontrol agents and biofertilizers and bioremediation so in this video we are going to learn these four topics so first we are going to see about microbes in sewage treatment and energy production so we we all know that sewage is the waste generated every day in cities and towns and it consists of human excreta is it so mainly it contains large amount of organic matters and microbes these microbes are pathogenic to humans and are biodegradable pollutants usually the domestic waste consists of approximately 99% water then it also along with that it possesses suspended solids and other soluble organic and inorganic substances so the sea sewage water should be treated before it gets discharged into any natural water bodies like rivers and streams okay so now we are going to see about wastewater treatment so what is the main objective of this wastewater treatment is it is the objective is to reduce organic and inorganic compounds in the wastewater to the level that it is no longer support microbial growth and also to eliminate the potentially toxic materials so these are the objectives of wastewater treatment mainly the microbes like bacteria and some protozoans play a major role in the treatment of sewage water so now we are going to see about sewage treatment the sewage treatment usually performed by three stages the first stage is primary treatment so what they will do during primary treatment means so during primary treatment there will be physical removal of solid and particulate organic and inorganic matter so how will how they will do this physical removal means by means of filtration and sedimentation so next the floating debris that is removed by sequential filtration and the grid grid is uh, nothing but uh, soil and small pebbles so they are removed by means of sedimentation so after this all the solid that gets settled in the primary treatment tank is called as primary sludge and the supernatant forms the watery uh, substance that is called as a primary effluent okay so after the primary treatment this primary effluent is sent to passed to the secondary treatment during secondary treatment the primary effluent passed into large aeration tank okay this tank is constantly agitated and the air is pumped into it constantly so because of this agitation and the pumping of gas allow vigorous growth of useful aerobic microbes into flock so flock so nothing but mass of bacteria associated with fungal filaments so thus it form mesh like structures okay and this microbes consume the major part of organic matter in the effluent thus it reduce bod so what do you mean by bod bod means biochemical oxygen demand or biological oxygen demand what does the bod refers means bod refers to the amount of oxygen that would be consumed if all the organic matter in 1 liter of water is oxidized by bacteria the sewage water is treated till the bod is reduced if the bod is greater then the waste water is more with a polluting potential so the bod should be reduced then once the bod of a sewage water is reduced the effluent is passed into the settling tank so in the settling tank the flocks are allowed to sediment at the bottom okay that sediment flocks are called as activated sludge and then a small part of this activated sludge is again pumped into the aeration tank as inoculum and the remaining large amount of sludge is pumped into the large tank that is called as anaerobic sludge digesters so in this the bacteria grow anaerobically and digest pathogenic bacteria and fungi which is present in the sludge 
okay and during this the bacteria produces a mixture of gas that are, they are methane hydrogen sulfate and carbon dioxide okay this forms the biogas and this is used as a source of energy after secondary treatment the sewage water is transferred to the tertiary treatment so the tertiary treatment is the final process so during this treatment the water quality the wastewater quality gets improved before it is used for uh, reuse before reuse recycle or to release into the natural water bodies like rivers and streams and during the tertiary treatment it rem it removes the remaining inorganic compounds and other substances like nitrogen and phosphorus and after removing all these things uh, the wastewater is disinfected with uv rays okay why they are using this uv rays means uv rays does not alter the water quality mainly it inactivate the microorganisms and uv rays uh, replaces the actually uv rays is a chemical free process and it completely replaces the existing chlorination system okay and some microorganisms like cryptosporidia and giardia so these are the microorganisms they are resistant to chlorine okay so even uh, by using uv rays such type of microorganisms can be easily killed so thus the sewage water is treated before it is discharged into the natural water bodies or for re it is used reused or recycled okay so this is the diagram which is representing about the wastewater treatment see the wastewater are coming out from the cities homes cities and towns okay so first it is taken to the pre treatment tank okay there they remove all the coarse solid sand and grits okay then it is taken to primary settling tank so in the primary settling tank all the uh, solid substances are uh, filtered out uh, and make it to sediment thereby the sludge it produces settled solid substance that is called as primary sludge and the supernatant that is called as primary effluent the primary effluent is taken to the aeration zone okay and the primary sludge is taken to the anaerobic sludge digester okay here it produces biogas okay and the primary effluent which is taken into the aeration zone that they supply the air uh, air is pumped into the aeration tank and constantly it get agitated thereby it increases the growth of bacteria in the form of flocks okay and this flocks of bacteria digest the organic substances and also it kills the uh, it is causing pathogens okay and then it is taken to the secondary settling tank okay so here about 80 to 90 percentage of organic solids are settled out okay these have uh, from the secondary settling tank the solid organic substances are taken to the an anaerobic sludge digester in order to uh, produce the biogas okay and the remaining is taken remaining the effluent is taken into the treated effluent is taken into the di disinfectant zone here they use the uv radiation to disinfect the sewage water okay so thus the sewage water get treated and it is free from uh, pollutants and disease causing pathogens okay next we are going to see about microbial fuel cell mfc so actually it is a biochemical system and it is used to drive an electric current by using bacteria and, mim and mimicking bacterial interaction found in nature so this is the microbial fuel cell so how the electric current is produced in this microbial fuel cell means the microbial fuel cells work by allowing bacteria to oxidize and reduce the organic molecules okay usually the bacterial respiration is one big redox reaction so during this uh, bacterial respiration electrons are being moved around okay the so same principle is used in this uh, microbial fuel cell so this microbial fuel cell consists of an anode and a cathode this anode and cathode are separated by a membrane that is called as proton exchange membrane okay in the anode side the substrate that is organic substances are kept okay and they add the microbes into that organic molecules 
okay and this bacteria started to digest the organic substances in the anode side by oxidation thereby it produces protons it, the microbes oxidizes the organic substance in the anode side and thereby generate the protons this protons pass through this proton transport membrane into the cathode side the electrons from the anode passed into the external circuit thus it produces current so next we are going to see about microbes in the production of biogas so what is biogas biogas is a mixture of different gases so what is biogas biogas is a mixture of different gases produced by the breakdown of organic matter in the absence of oxygen and from where it is produced means it is produced from agricultural waste manure municipal waste plant material sewage food waste etc so what does it consist of it consists of 63 percentage of methane gas then carbon dioxide along with that it possesses carbon dioxide and hydrogen okay and then usually this methane is produced by means of methane producing bacteria that is called as methanogens biogas is devoid of a uh, smell and also it burns with the blue flame without any smoke okay and this uh, methanogens also produces anaerobic sludge okay which is used as a fertilizer this methanogen also pres uh, present in the rumen of the cattle uh, why it is present in the rumen of cattle means so usually uh, cattle uh, feed on plants okay so the plant cell wall is made up of cellulose so in order to digest the cellulose methane producing bacteria are present in the rumen of the cattle okay and uh, the excreta of the cattle uh, is called as dung okay and the dung is commonly called as gobar so the gobar gas is generated by the anaerobic decomposition of the cattle dung so what does this gobar gas consist of it consists of methane carbon dioxide with some hydrogen nitrogen and other gases in trace amount so how this gobar gas is produced in it so it is constructed in such a way biogas unit or gobar gas unit consists of a mixing tank okay so in the mixing tank they will add up all the uh, organic substances like uh, cattle dung agricultural waste uh, sewage waste etc okay and with the that is connected with the a large tank which is called as digester tank this digester tank is made up of concrete or cement or steel okay and it is taken to the, uh, the from the mixing tank the organic substances are taken to the digester tank so that the met uh, methanogens the bacteria digest the organic substance and started to produce the biogas so from that tank uh, tube is connected to the outlet okay in order to get the gas biogas okay and another vent is there so that is connected with the overflow tank so the after the digestion of organic substances the sludge is taken to this overflow tank so that sludge is used as fertilizer and the biogas is used uh, for cooking purpose and for lighting so next we are going to see about microbes as biocontrol agents and biofertilizers so what do you mean by biocontrol so biocontrol is method of controlling pest by using microbes and by naturally occurring substances which are derived from plants and animals so what do you mean by biopesticide the use of microbes or other biological agents to in order to control the pest is called as biopesticide so mainly this biopesticide is used to control insect pest so first ladybird beetle and dragonfly so ladybird beetle is used to control the insect aphids and the dragonfly is used to control mosquito larvae then bacillus thuringiensis actually it is a soil dwelling bacteria and it is most commonly used biopesticide okay and it contain a toxin called as cytotoxin so how this cytotoxin is formed it means during sporulation of bacillus thuringiensis it produces crystal proteins so that proteins are called as delta endotoxins 
okay and this uh, protein is encoded by a set of gene that is called as cry genes and this toxins have specific activities against some of the insect orders like lepidoptera say example butterfly moth diptera the bug then coleoptera beetles hymenoptera bees and wasps okay mainly it attack the larvae of these type of insects this cry gene with the help of this cry gene the scientists produced genetically modified bt cotton okay so how it is working means so this is the bacillus thuringiensis this is the bt toxic crystal and this is bt cotton okay so this bt cotton produces uh, this uh, bt toxin crystal in the, in their leaf okay so when the insect larva feed on that bt cotton leaf okay so along with that this bt toxin crystal enter into the gut of insect so that it gets solubilized and activated okay because of the gut bh that this cry protein get attached with the receptor on the membrane so that by it make a pore on the cells of the gut so thus it causes cell lysis that means cell death so because of that it stops the movement of the gut wall so, so because of that it uh, paralyzes the digestive tract so thus the insect stops eating and starts to death that does it controls the insect pest so next we are going to see about weed side so what do you mean by weed side these are the substances that uh, destroy the weeds without harming the useful plants okay and they are compounds and secondary metabolites which are derived from microbes like bacteria fungi and protozoa so weed side so the compounds and secondary metabolites which are produced by microbes like bacteria fungi and protozoa the first bioherbicide was developed in 1981 okay so that bioherbicide is called as mycoherbicide myco means fungal herbicide which is derived from the fungus phytophthora palmivora and it controls the growth of strangler vein in the citrus crop so next trichoderma trichoderma is a free living fungi and it is commonly found in root root of the plant and it is a effective biocontrol agent for several plant pathogens next baculoviruses baculoviruses attack insects and other arthropods then neopolyhedral virus so it is one of the best biocontrol agent why means they are species specific so they have narrow spectra insecticide application so mainly kills the insect pest okay not the useful insect okay next bio fertilizers okay so this bio fertilizer increase physical chemical properties of solid that means it will maintain the soil structure texture water holding capacity cation exchanging capacity ph uh, uh, thereby it provide the several nutrients and sufficient organic uh, matter to the plant okay and uh, the main source of biofertilizers are bacteria fungi and cyanobacteria so let us see one by one rhizobium rhizobium is a symbiotic bacteria so it will uh, fix the atmospheric nitrogen okay it infects the root nodules of leguminous plant where it will live mix in the root nodules of leguminous plant and fix the atmospheric nitrogen next asospirillum and acetobacter these are free living bacteria this also fix the atmospheric nitrogen thus it enriches the soil next mycorrhiza so these are all the fungal symbionts with root okay and this uh, association the association of fungi and root absorbs phosphorus from the soil okay and also this association leads to resist the root borne pathogen tolerance of salinity drought and also it enhances the plant growth and development okay so examples are members of genus glomus from mycorrhiza so these are the examples for this fungi next cyanobacteria actually cyanobacteria are prokaryotic 
free living organisms it can also fix atmospheric nitrogen example oscillatoria nostra anabina polypotrix the cyanobacteria secrete growth promoting substances like indole 3 acetic acid indole 3 butyric acid naphthalene citric acid amino acids proteins and vitamins and this biofertilizers are commonly used in organic farming method so what do you mean by organic farming method means it is a technique which involves cultivation of plants and rearing of animals in natural ways that means without using chemical substances or chemical fertilizer and this process involves the usage of biological materials and thereby we can avoid the synthetic substances to maintain the soil fertility and the ecological balance thereby we can minimize the pollution and wastage so what are the key features of this organic farming means so with the help of organic farming we can protect the soil quality by using organic materials and encouraging and encouraging biological activity then indirectly provisions of crop nutrition using soil microorganisms then nitrogen fixation in soil using legumes that is with the help of leguminous plants we can enrich the soil with nitrogen then weed and pest control is based on the method like crop rotation biological diversity natural predators organic manures and suitable chemical thermal and biological intervention so that by we can control the weeds and pest so next we are going to see about bio remediation so what do we mean by bio remediation here the use of naturally occurring or genetically engineered microbes are used to reduce or degrade pollutants that is called as bio remediation so usually it is less expensive and more sustainable there are two types of bio remediation one is in situ bio remediation another one is ex situ bio remediation so in situ means on the site itself ex situ means from that site site the substance it will taken out and it is cleared out okay so in situ bio remediation is nothing but treatment of contaminated water and soil in the site and ex situ bio remediation is nothing but treat, treatment of contaminated water and soil that is removed from the site and treated that is called as ex situ bio remediation next we are going to see about microbes involved in bio remediation so first aerobic microbes okay what are all the aerobic microbes involved in bio remediation okay this aerobic microbes mainly digest pesticides and hydrocarbons in the presence of oxygen so first one is pseudomonas pudida it is a genetically engineered microbe and anand mohan chakrabadi obtained patent for this recombinant bacterial strain okay and mainly it, it possess multi plasmid hydrocarbon degrading bacteria that means the bacteria possess many number of plasmid in its cell okay and mainly it digest the hydrocarbons okay it digest the hydrocarbons in the oil spills so see this picture so this is the microorganism this is oil spill so it uh, microorganism eat the oil and other organic contaminants in the water okay then this microbe digest that oil and convert that into carbon dioxide and water so after that this microorganism give off this carbon dioxide and water liberate so thus it reduces the hydrocarbon okay then nitrosomonas europaea so it degrades benzene and variety of halogenated organic compounds like trichloroethylene and vinyl chloride idionella sapiensis it is currently tried for recycling of pet plastics why means so they use pet taste and um, head taste enzymes to break down pet plastic into terephthalic acid and ethylene glycol so see this picture so this is the pet plastic okay so this uh, idionella eats up the pet and it break down into terephthalic acid and ethylene glycol so thus pet bottle is digested and it is reduced into smaller molecules it is broken broken down into smaller molecules so next we are going to see about anaerobic microbes in bio remediation 
Similarly, degrade pollutants in the absence of oxygen. First one is Dechloromonas aromatica. So, this type of microbe, it degrades benzene and it oxidizes toluene and xylene. So, next microbe is Phenerochid chrysosporium. So, actually it is an anaerobic fungus. It, it exhibits strong potential for bioremediation of pesticides, polyaromatic hydrocarbons, dyes, trinitrotoluene, cyanides, carbon tetrachloride. So, this it has a strong potential potentiality to digest all these type of pollutants. Okay. And then dehalocoid species. So, it converts the toxic trichloroethane to non-toxic ethane. The next one is Stelotiopsis microspora. So, these are the species of endophytic fungus. It has the capacity to break down and digest the polyurethane. So, this makes the fungus to potential candidate for a bioremediation project that involved in large quantities of plastics. Okay, students. I hope you would have understood. Thank you, students.